I did mention here before we went to break that The Rock and WrestleMania 40, we have some news. You would already know this if you went to the front page of the website and saw a little bit about what Dave Meltzer has in this week's newsletter. I will read it uh, verbatim here. Quote, Regarding the stories that WWE won't do Rock versus Reigns at Mania if Rock wants to do it, what we were told is this, if he wants the spot, I can't believe WWE would turn him down. But after Johnson turned it down last year, nobody is going with the idea he's going to do it this year. That's how it's written. Now, I got a little bit more. The match is not scheduled, unlike at this time last year when the match was considered a good shot. The belief is that Johnson will have plenty of work once the strikes are over and he'll have plenty to do. What we were told is Rock is not going to come back and win the title. I'd never anticipate that would be an issue as if the match was to happen. I always figured Reigns to win and Rock then retiring in the ring. End quote. Aside from a six-second squash of Eric Rowan at WrestleMania 32, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has not wrestled since facing John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 29 in 2013. He made a surprise appearance on SmackDown alongside Pat McAfee in September and took part in a segment with Austin Theory and had a little bit of an interaction with John Cena. So, filthy Tom Lawler. We have lots of options. Actually, you could say we have lots of options. I see one option as of still right now. It is Cody Rhodes to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. But what say you? Do you think at this point it's going to happen? And I got, I guess, more than that, because I got to be honest, I don't care to see it necessarily. I don't care if he comes back or not at this point. But does The Rock... Do you care about this? Does it matter at this point? Or do people want to see Cody? Mike, after The Rock at WrestleMania 39 ghosted the WWE, I could care less about seeing him wrestle. It's been 10 years. I think it's time to give the rightful family member a shot to take on Roman Reigns in the main event of WrestleMania. Now you could have Cody no Cody Rhodes challenge on night one and once again come up short and then night two you set up the big return. Roman Reigns defending against the long lost family member Luther Reigns. What? <laughs> There's a lot of setup, but as far as I'm concerned, it was worth it. That's a deep cut right there. Honestly, without old horseshoe Luther Reigns, do you believe is do you believe you're gonna have two Roman Reigns? But would you wanna see two Roman Reigns matches or I mean the women obviously got pushed out of the spot last year because Sami Zayn was so over and you had that going on where it was Sami and Kevin against the Usos. That really was the right match to make the main event. Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and whoever, let's say, you know, on night one, would that, wouldn't that still make more sense? Or do you do a thing where, you know, again, Roman Reigns would open the first night of WrestleMania, then close the next one? No, I think we're getting one Roman Reigns match. That was simply for the setup of the joke that I mentioned Roman Reigns would wrestle twice. I don't that know. Reigns is older than a lot of the listeners. They don't remember that time. When I look at the layout, I mean, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns is the only match that I'm pretty confident is scheduled for that future WrestleMania. Uh, maybe you get something along the lines of also Kevin Owens taking on Sami Zayn, um, you know, Seth Rollins probably will be involved in some way in that other title uh, situation. And... Other than that, I don't really see, you know, I don't see the, the cards. I don't see the future layout of next year's WWE. We have LA Knight taking on Roman Reigns, which was made official today, I believe, for Crown Jewel. And it looked like the direction was in that way anyway, so I'm not surprised. But they're going to have to be really careful about what they do as far as this finish of this match goes. Obviously, 
LA Knight is hotter than virtually anyone that I can remember in recent times. I mean, if you ask Brian Alvarez, he'd say John Cena is hotter than anyone. But other than LA Knight and Sami Zayn over the past year, I can't remember two people of the crowd has been behind more uh, in recent memory than those two guys. So you don't want to take any of the steam off him, but clearly the plan is not for LA Knight to be the long-term champion or even a short-term champion, I would think. You know, um, this is, I guess, subjective, depending on how you view somebody after a loss. But one thing that they've been really good at during the Roman Reigns' reign has been, and again, uh, this is, some of this is because there's a lot of goodwill built up for these people from the fan base. But Bobby Lashley, multiple opportunities or teases, he doesn't win it. He's not less over. Drew McIntyre was not less over from winning. Sami Zayn was not less over. Sure, they lost some off the fastball along the way, but Kevin Owens, a great example. How many shots did he have? I mean, that's one that's even woven into the storyline that they have with Kevin Owens with how many times he had a shot and there was some sort of nonsense that ended up screwing him over and out of the way. And that's what they could do right here with LA Knight is have that type of interference because I'm sure they have a lot of confidence in themselves that they can continue to keep this storyline moving and continue to keep guys strong who weave in and out of it so I'm sure that they're probably thinking that as you mentioned it was revealed by Houston Mitchell in in the Los Angeles Times Uh, you know I I like Houston Mitchell very very much Uh, it's been a long time uh, contributor to the Wrestling Observer, Observer Newsletter but you know, it feels like this was, a you know, like everything that they fed this story to him. And it's not any surprise that we're talking about L.A. Knight and Reigns for Crown Jewel because that's what we've been assuming the whole time. Uh, there's also Seth Rollins against Drew McIntyre. Honestly, Tom, I think by the time it gets to WrestleMania, we will have Drew McIntyre as the top male leader in the judgment day the boss of that family is mommy and it will remain rhea ripley but i believe drew mcintyre is going to be in the judgment day damien priest will be out of the judgment day and maybe by that point one of the two will be the champion on the raw brand and that could be a match we see what do you think i am not an avid viewer of raw is that something that they've been moving in the direction of i know that They've been teasing a Drew McIntyre heel turn. And that's what it's based around is really Jey Uso being back and everybody telling him he has to drop it. And the reason that I theorize this is, you know, you got J.D. McDonough there. He's cool, but he's not going to be the leader of that group. There's no badass of that group once Damian Priest were to leave. So it just seems to make sense. That's a good place to kind of slide Drew. You keep the group strong. You keep Drew strong because he's in a strong group. And then you have a strong opponent with Damian Priest and, and somebody to work off of. Yeah, I think it makes great sense, actually. And, you know, Drew McIntyre has essentially been the same Drew McIntyre for years and years at this point. He's great in ring. It's not like, believe me, that wasn't a uh, a knock on Drew McIntyre no, at all because he's, he's, he's one of the best baby things. Face. He's yeah. one of the best things on in the WWE. He's phenomenal in ring. He's he looks great, but he's essentially had the same character for years, and he needs a change. Um, the only difference, I guess, would be when he was in the team with Sheamus, you know. But really, the, he was still the same guy. So I think this is a needed change, and it'll give uh, you know a lot more depth at the top of the Raw main event heel scene. Now, you know, who, who is there now? Nakamura? Well, Gunther, right now it's, Sh- it's Shinsuke Nakamura. Right? It's the Judgment Day as a group, you know, and then, you know, the... <sighs> I mean, from there, it does get kind of, like, spread around a little bit. It just kind of depends on who you like. I mean, Gunther stands out as he's almost uh, really away from everybody right now because everything is about Chad Gable, and he's operating in his own little universe where he's feuding with his own subordinates as much as he's really feuding with anybody else. 
And if they can build to Chad Gable winning that Intercontinental title in Philadelphia, l- I, what a story. I, that would be a a good crowd to do it in front of either that would make Chad Gable. I mean, for as much as people love Gunther, you know, and there are a lot of people I think they're loving Chad's you know his his run to the belt they love the chase but they may not necessarily you know pop the way they want them to i think i I honestly think philadelphia would be a perfect place for that hayes versus dragunov yeah this is gonna be very very short dragunov has his hair hanging over his eyes that's what he got out of this match (laughs) i gave that a 12 on the granny scale why? His hair was in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about we get you a, a pen recorder for your birthday? Brian, I got one. Just nobody knows how to hook it up. So you don't have one. You have one that needs to be hooked up. It works as a pen, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll help you hook that up. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I ever heard. <laughs> you are the worst grandmother. Oh my God. <laughs> God. She just cackled at you. Is she drinking that? <laughs> no, she's putting her teeth in or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.